A franchise on the verge of total destruction saved by robots from the future riding a wave of Japanese innovation sweeping across the globe. And the most incredible thing about it was that it wasn't even the first time it happened. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Transformers Robots in Disguise. Transformers Robots in Disguise is a 39-episode animated series that aired in the U.S. from September of 2001 to March of 2002, taking place outside the continuity of both the G1 and Beast Wars eras of Transformers. It rebooted the franchise for an entire generation just before rebooting the franchise for an entire generation. Koji Onishi wakes up to the sound of his alarm blaring at 2 o'clock in the morning. He made sure to set it because his father, Dr. Onishi, is the keynote speaker at the first international scientific symposium on the other side of the world in New York City. A truly groundbreaking event with scientists from all over the globe, specialists in the field of energy and the environment, meeting to share their research and work together for the betterment of all humankind. Koji's father, Dr. Onishi, is the world's foremost archaeologist and expert on energy and natural resources. He's here to deliver a message about the greatest danger to the planet Earth, the inefficient and improper use of energy. But the symposium is interrupted by the hand of Megatron, or rather, a hand that is Megatron. Megatron introduces himself as leader of the Predacons and the future ruler of this galaxy. Because, like the Decepticons of old, the Predacons need energy, and there's one person here at this symposium, Dr. Onishi, who knows the location of every source of energy on Earth. Koji attempts to contact his father via a high-tech communications device called a cell phone that is immediately hacked by Optimus Prime, who meets up with Koji to explain just how bad things are about to get for planet Earth. Optimus explains that he and Megatron are robots from the planet Cybertron, a planet many light years from Earth. Their two races, Autobots and Predacons, are locked in a battle across the galaxies. Transformers all, but Autobots live to help and protect others. Predacons exist to conquer and destroy. And now that the Predacons have come for Earth's resources, the Autobots must stop them by any means necessary. Thank you to 80stees.com for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY to get 30% off your order today. What's the first thing that pops into your head when I say the 1980s or the 1990s? Don't think about it, just say it. One, two, three, Rubik's Cube. Yes, they have that, or they had that, or they will have that. 80stees.com is constantly refreshing their inventory with officially licensed t-shirts featuring characters, quotes, and logos from cartoons, comics, TV shows, movies, wrestling, and music from the 1970s through the 2000s. So while I can't guarantee that everything you can think of will be in stock, I can guarantee that you'll always be surprised by the range of their selection. 80stees.com has something for everyone. Your favorite heroes like Batman, Spider-Man, Mega Man, Deadpool, and Wolverine. Voltron, both Lion and Vehicle. Star Wars, Stargate, Old and Older, Battlestar Galactica. Motley Crue, Bismarcky, Pink Floyd, and Jimi Hendrix. Find the shirt that's right for you, the one that speaks to your interests, and lets the world know that there's no bigger fan of Scratch and Sniff stickers, Spam, or Kellogg's Fruit Loops than you. And you can prove it, because you're wearing the shirt. Click the link below and use code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order today. Again, that's code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order. And thanks again to 80stees.com. The fate of the Transformers brand in the U.S. was at a crossroads in 1999. Approaching the end of the Beast Wars era, the second great era in Transformers history, it was clear to Hasbro that it was time for a new direction, but which way? Unfortunately, a new direction was going to take time to chart out, and the old direction was still in production. Let me get you up to speed real quick. In 1984, Transformers kicked off in the U.S. when Hasbro licensed and rebranded two toy lines created by the Japanese company Takara. One of those two toy lines was Microchange, accessories designed for use with Takara's previously released Microman 4-inch action figures. Microchange featured familiar household objects that could transform into vehicles, weapons, and robots. These robots were in disguise so they could hide from the forces of evil and also your parents. Uh, that's not a toy or an alien robot, Mom. Just my Smith & Wesson Magnum 44. The second Takara toy line was Diaclone. Imagine those same 4-inch Microman figures shrunk down to 1 inch to allow for more complex and elaborate alien spaceships and robots for them to pilot. Diaclone gradually shifted to vehicles directly inspired by and licensed from Earth companies with a subline called Car Robots. Hasbro took the household objects of Microchange and the vehicles of Car Robots, imported them, and rebranded them as Transformers. Furthermore, their partnership with Marvel created names, identities, and a mythology to sell those new toys in comics and on television. It was all 
very successful. But nothing lasts forever, and by the time The Transformers the movie was released in 1986, most kids were just about ready to move on. The marketing refresh, or murdering, of so many of the original characters sealed the deal. The G1 era ended in the US in 1987. But in Japan, Transformers continued with new characters, new concepts, new animated series, and new toys. 1988 had Transformers Super God Master Force, 1989 Transformers Victory, and in 1990 Transformers Zone, a single 30-minute animated episode released on VHS. The franchise limped along in comics until 1992. Back in the U.S. in 1993, Hasbro soft rebooted Transformers as Generation 2. The comics told all new stories to engage a new audience, but on television it was reruns of the original cartoon. On store shelves it was repaints of G1 toys, followed by new designs with action features like launching missiles, color change technology, and then somehow, the GoBots returned. Do you know what? I can't believe this shit! G2 ended in 1995, at which time Hasbro took a completely different approach to rebooting the line, and rebooted it. 1996's Beast Wars was a complete reinvention of the Transformers brand that abandoned many names, characters, concepts, and iconography. Beast Wars looked different, sounded different, the series animation was different, their alt modes looked like actual animals, not robot animals, all in a deliberate break from G1, except for the fact that the toys still converted from one form to another. Beast Wars also changed the storytelling, aging it up a bit and telling a continuous narrative over time instead of self-contained episodes like the G1 era, an approach that would ultimately factor into its cancellation. Through 1999, sales were decreasing year after year, and Hasbro saw the darker, more mature, long-form approach to storytelling as a barrier to attracting new, younger fans. As the series transitioned to Beast Machines on television and toy shelves, it was clear that it was, again, Time for a reboot. In Japan, the Beast Wars era took a different route. Season 1 aired in Japan in 1997, a year later than the US. In 1998, Takara created original Japan-exclusive toys and an animated series called Beast Wars 2 to buy time while the US produced more episodes. In the US, Beast Wars was a weekly show. Japan wanted to air it daily. By 1999, the Japanese market was ready for a reboot as well. Kids were done with animal robots and weird alien animal robot vehicle modes. Everyone was ready to go back to Transformers the basics. Hi guys! By 2000, Hasbro was going through a lot of changes. Through the 90s, they spent a ton of money expanding into international markets and consuming brands to expand their market share. $486 million for Tonka, which included Kenner and Parker Brothers, $220 million for Galoob, $325 million for the rights to Pokemon, and another $325 million for Wizards of the Coast. For all that growth in 2000, they took huge losses miscalculating the demand for Star Wars and Pokemon. Leadership wanted to move away from the up and down business of licensed properties and get back to the stability of their own properties. For Hasbro, that meant taking a serious look at the Transformers and ending the Beast Wars era before its next chapter, TransTech, launched. Despite it already being well into the design phase, Hasbro killed TransTech and instead began development on the next full reboot of the franchise, Transformers Armada, targeting release in 2002. But Hasbro needed something on shelves to maintain brand awareness, drive sales, and buy time. Luckily, in Japan, Takara was already building the robots of the future. Become a YouTube channel member today for $1 a month to get access to an exclusive monthly video. For March 2024, that exclusive video is the history of Fruit Stripe Gum. So click the join button below this video or click the link in the description to become a YouTube channel member today. Takara created Transformers Car Robots in 2000 as a soft reboot slash refocusing of the brand to go forward while going back to their roots. Focus group tests at the time revealed that when kids were offered a robot animal toy or a robot vehicle toy, they picked the vehicle. Makes sense, kids who grew up in the Beast Wars era weren't around during G1, so Transformers based on real cars was a new idea, and they didn't have any attachment to the way things worked in G1. G1 was your father's Transformers. From there, Takara followed the numbers and revived some of the popular characters from the past. Autobot leader Fire Convoy, who would be renamed Optimus Prime in the US, returned as a fire truck because that same testing showed that kids like fire trucks even more than regular trucks. But Takara wasn't ready to just throw everything out like Hasbro. Japan's Transformers continuity dated back to the G1 era. Car Robots was a bridge from the Beast Wars era back to vehicles. 
They combined the two eras. They maintained animal forms for the big bad guy Gigatron, who would be renamed Megatron in the US, and the rest of the Predacons while they reintroduced vehicle forms for the Autobots. 39 episodes of Transformers Car Robots ran in Japan from April to December of 2000. Not only was it a return to more traditional Transformers robot and vehicle designs, but it was also a return to mostly standard cell animation instead of the CG animation used throughout Beast Wars. And for Japan, it was officially, officially the end of the G1 era. With Car Robots, Hasbro had its stopgap, its own bridge between Beast Wars and Armada, a finished cartoon and toys ready to go. All they had to do was do what they did in the first place back in 1984 when all of this started, select all, rename, save as Transformers Robots in Disguise. Transformers Car Robots became Transformers Robots in Disguise, adapted for US television by Saban Entertainment. By 2000, Saban was very well known for adapting Japanese children's media to the US, beginning with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in 1993. Like so many other Saban productions, Transformers Robots in Disguise was added to the Fox Kids programming schedule. While there were some modifications made to localize the characters and concepts, it was a historic moment as it marked the first time a Transformers series aired in the US that was fully produced in Japan. And it couldn't have happened at a better time. Despite the fact that it was seen by Hasbro as a placeholder until Armada was ready, Robots in Disguise kicked off as the US market was begging for more cartoons, comics, games, and toys straight from Japan. Saban's Power Rangers and Nintendo's Pokemon were two of the biggest pop culture drivers of the mid to late 90s. Cartoon Network's Toonami block of television tapped directly into that vein, importing Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z in 1998, Ronin Warriors in 1999, and Gundam Wing in 2000, among others. Transformers Robots in Disguise first episode aired in the US on September 8th, 2001, and like several shows at the time, was quickly forced to edit the series content after September 11th. That degree of editing under duress is very, very difficult to do with a show that airs daily around the country. Some episodes had to be moved around to allow time for them to be edited and therefore aired out of sequence. That shuffling made plots that were already a bit confusing due to US adaptation even more confusing. Some episodes were rewritten, some episodes had parts cut out, and some episodes were just removed altogether. Later episodes had to be rewritten to account for details that were lost to the episodes that never aired. With the Car Robots show came the Car Robots toys, while it had struggled in Japan amidst a sea of other transforming robot toy lines in the US, it was a welcome addition to the growing field of import robots and an alternative to Power Rangers. And look. There were a lot of toys. Hasbro took the opportunity to roll everything into robots in disguise that they could, from existing Takara car robots molds to unused prototypes to new original designs specifically for Hasbro, and even items from previous eras of Transformers, all the way back to the beginning of the brand. We can't possibly list them all here or go into any kind of detail more than to say it was an era of innovation and experimentation that ultimately appealed to a large swath of Transformers fans, but none more important than the kids who would be needed to carry the brand into the future. Transformers Robots in Disguise has never been officially released on home media in the US because the ownership chain is so different from every other Transformers series that has been developed. Created in Japan, adapted by Saban, it was technically acquired by Disney in 2001 when they purchased Fox Kids Worldwide, which included Saban Entertainment's library. That said, as of this video, you can watch all 39 episodes unofficially here on YouTube. All of this raises the question as to where Transformers Robots in Disguise falls into the continuity of Transformers. Heck, even Beast Wars eventually got rolled into the G1 chronology. As for Robots in Disguise, is it canon? No, not in the US. In Japan, Car Robots was created as a continuation of characters and themes that had been evolving throughout the Japanese continuity, but that didn't align with the way that Hasbro handled the Beast Wars era, and certainly not how they adapted the events of Car Robots as Robots in Disguise. That said, the most significant development since the series ended in 2001 took place this year in 2024, like two weeks ago as of this video. Hasbro's HasLab crowdfunding program engaged over 28,000 backers to successfully fund an Omega Prime figure, which includes both Optimus Prime and potential Matrix successor, Ultra Magnus. An indication that despite the original intention for Robots in Disguise to be a brief low investment intermission, one could call it the turning point that held the franchise together. A moment where little was expected of it, but much was delivered, including the next generation of fans primed for a future full of transforming robots. Transformers Robots in Disguise was followed by the Unicron trilogy featuring Armada in 2002 and 2003, Energon in 2004, and Cybertron in 2005. In 2007, the television series was rebooted with Transformers animated while the movie era began with Michael Bay's Transformers. 
And for a decade, Transformers was bigger than it had ever been, stronger and more popular worldwide than either Hasbro or Takara could have possibly imagined back in 1984 when they first created Robots in Disguise. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toy galaxy. Several different tiers to address your specific Secret Galaxy content needs. We have a new Secret Galaxy merch shop. Check that out at secretgalaxy.shop. All merchandise is physically in stock and ready to ship. Links to all of this in the description below. And let us know in the comments down below if you were one of the fans that helped Transformers survive into the next millennium as a fan of robots in disguise, toys, and cartoons. I am old enough that I was there for the original Car Robots Invasion in 1984, and by 2001 I was more interested in Gundam than Transformers, you can't collect everything. Palisades, Resident Evil, and Bandai's Gundam offerings had my wallet locked up. <laughs> there was no room for anything else, including rent and food. <laughs> Cut. I call those the hungry years. <laughs>